and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's me, Duke CT, and welcome, welcome to the Duke CT Lounge on this Wednesday evening, this live on TalkShoe.com, which by the way, we have got over, ladies and gentlemen, over 40,000 downloads, yes, over 40,000 downloads with the Duke CT Lounge here on TalkShoe, thank you so much, I love it, and I love all of y'all for doing here, and um, we're going to get into some news, we're going to get into some stuff here. We're going to get into that, and before we do, remember the phone number, as always, is 605-562-0444. Once again, the number is 605-562-0444. To uh, call in, then you have the call ID is 92417. Once again, the call the show ID is 92417, and the PIN, connect me to Duke CT, is 2249866. That's one way to connect me. Also... You can connect just poking up to the internet. Just come in, click the internet button. Boom. You can do that as well. There's other places to, you know, other things you could do. Just come in and do the uh, internet thing. Here you are. Um, uh, I think we have someone here. Uh, Dragon Slam. Let me just see if I can. Um, okay. Let's chat. Uh, I'll just put the phone number. Um, let's see. Put the phone number right here. And let's see put this um again let's see phone number show id in the pen right here okay and always want to make sure you get this thing up here there it is a phone number there it is and there it is all the stuff where to connect using the phone and all and all that good stuff to actually make sure you can uh, connect with me right there on the chat room and if you can't use the chat but what you can use the phone remember you can always Always, ladies and gentlemen, just sit in the chat room because hey, I want to hear from you, the people, because it is the people's show. And well, <laughs> I know someone's gonna remember that. And speaking of that, it was a terrible set, Gray. Let's talk about Telltale Games. Holy crap! What a wow! <laughs> this started off on Friday. In fact, I was talking about it in the live stream. Uh, while my Epic Mickey live stream, and if you haven't joined in, uh, you know, hey, I'm always there, always the, um, you know, um, always, right, and, uh, always, and I say this always to, uh, you know, always do the live stream on Fridays, if there are things, you know, um, by the way, I'm gonna say this right now, I try to do it on Fridays, but unless some things come up, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I will not be going this, on uh, this Friday, because I'm gonna be, um, celebrating a birthday dinner with my dad and my own family, so ha! We're not doing a live stream Friday, but we what well, we we are gonna be doing we'll be doing a live stream Thursday. So it's gonna be a little bit earlier so y'all can sit there and actually watch the greatness and hopefully we'll try to finish the game and all that good stuff. So anyway that's a little show thing up there. So sit back and all that good stuff. So anyway we got chat room all live. We got a couple people in here. So I drank so and I got guest three. Hopefully you're having fun, which is important because hey, this is a show about what? Having a good time. But yet let's get back to some real in some cases sad news, but eventually news here. And remember if you want to come into the show and um you know, make sure you can um uh, and uh let's see, um let's see the uh well <clears throat> Uh, this thing that has a lot more, you know, something has more drama than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, <laughs> as Telltale just out of nowhere, basically, <laughs> they had a, um, when uh, Telltale Games employees were surprised to tell, um, I right, just from Kotaku, so. But yeah, a link will be in the description. Is that they had a staff ride meeting, um, and the thing is, um, they were working until 3 a.m. the night before, and this was, they had no inkling the studio was going to let go. Oh, we got a caller here. Uh, we got 512, 512, uh, you can, um, talk. Um, hello. Hey, is this Dragon Slayer? I think it is. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Um, have you started talking about Telltale Games yet, or? Oh yes, I am. I'm talking. I'm getting the the backstory and, and such. Um, because you heard because, this was a shocker, 
right? I mean, oh, yeah. you didn't see this coming. Um, I, I didn't. Like, I, I honestly never played any of those games. But, like, uh, but, like I, the reason I never really played any of those games is because they all seem to look exactly the same with, like, very little... A little emphasis with very little emphasis on gameplay, but mostly it was just that it felt like it was just more glorified merchandise. If that, if I can put it like that, maybe maybe I'm being unfair, but like with all the big license and stuff, are you yeah, able to? Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you just fine, man. I'm hearing you um, perfectly, and uh, you know, and it, it, it's uh, let's see. Oh, another. Um, yeah, I think, um, I hear you uh, correctly, so you're good. I think that, um, you can hear me, right? Um, yeah, I can hear you. All right, um, but yeah, it's, um, right here on on Kotaku and and such, it says, this one point they've been working until three o'clock in the morning before this meeting took place, as when the CEO, P. Hawley, announced the close of the company in a staff-wide meeting, let and they had no, the, the, the people working on the games had no idea what was going on. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they basically just, comp- over 200 employees, around 200 employees were fired. Leaving the skeleton crew of 25 people to finish off um, Minecraft story mode. This was a complete shock. and And when you hear that... Um, and even worse, they was basically, um, that the, um, human resource, head of human resources dropped another bomb, there will be another bombshell, according to, um, again, this, uh, the source and through Kotaku is that there will be no severance pay, which is, wow, and, and that is, to me, even worse, you telling people out of nowhere, I know real life can happen, things can go, uh, um, you know, things can go wildly out of plan and such. But to just to do this with people who are just working on these games, regardless of the quality and such, because games can be good, bad, and different, and everything else. But they were working as hard as they could. They were working in these from beginning to end, and this, this just it was just a a complete shock to some people. I was like, wow, you know, it's like a complete and total shock that this happened to them. And they just, and now not only that, but it's just, um, again, they have, they were not, they lost the severance pay, uh, severance. And, mm, well, and, and even better, their health benefits will run out at the end of the month and they were encouraged to apply for unemployment. Just wow. And, and according to another source and to social media posts by ex developers, they had 30 minutes to leave the building. They said, okay, get out. You're fired. Uh, you have thirty minutes to leave before you get you get forced out, and you have no severance pay. That wow. That that is for a company that is supposedly, yeah, it, it yeah, that is it's horrible and terrible. And you know it's funny how these companies have these um <clears throat> these uh false progressive type of um mindsets. Uh, drinks later, right? Um, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> All right, just some weird audio stuff. I'll clean that up in the pa- uh, in the post stuff. But yeah, uh, it's just funny how these pe- these uh, companies come up progressive and they're nice and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, they're just as cutthroat and mean as anything else they uh, as, as um as they as they come. You know, just don't. You know, I always say is that you know. You don't look at uh, people say, "Oh, they look great. They have progressive, like they have a, a female lead." I'm like, "No, that's not. Oh, like, that's nice." But to me, what are you doing for their employees? What are you doing for them to actually make sure these um these um gain these um you know take care of the uh, their employees, regardless of race and culture and everything else like that? You, if your culture is toxic and and mismanagement, it doesn't matter what type of progressive stuff on you put on the on the screen. It, it it just it's a it's a false it's a, it's a false picture to what's going on, and this stuff is that is that this was um and the funny thing is this was the the reason why supposedly a uh, a failing to pay out severance uh, and such was um uh, was that this was a business closure rather than partial layoffs like the twenty five percent downside hit the studio last November. 
And and this is by the way, this is based in California, and the Cal I Warn Act requires employees to provide sixty day notice for mass layoffs, but allows some you know, that's that I mean, that's interesting how that all this stuff is going on. And again, this is just on Friday. And you know, and there's some other stuff um um, you know, you know about this, and what do you think about this? Uh, another thing about the, um, yeah, and another thing about the employee thing, like one one something that's even that's just just as bad, like is that like apparently like Telltale posted on their Twitter saying that we we are gonna try to outsource to a bunch of people in order to finish The Walking Dead. Oh yeah! Again, as, like, I, I look. An, yeah, uh, go ahead. As uh, go ahead, uh, Dragon Slayer. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. Instead of using have, using letting those employees finish the Walking Dead, at least they're gonna outsource. Yeah, so, it looks like they were. But so, you like, know, um, that the firing, so. Oh yeah, and and here's the real sad part of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, is that you know. I I saw you know I I'm gonna you know I think I tweeted this out because this uh, picture what you will see on the screen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, some of the gamers and such, is pretty much this is that you had this one person who um, just I mean just um, yeah you know just um, said. Uh, <laughs> Uh, like, well, why can't they do it for free? I'm like, no, you can't do this stuff for free. It says right here. Um, I think I still have it saved somewhere, but if not, I'll resave it. It says the team right here on the um, Steam page right here. <laughs> and honestly, this is the arrogance here of this is right here. The team to work for free in Bowden says, like, yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but. This is exactly what modders have been doing for years. Yes, because that's what mod. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that y this is not that you know at all. I mean, <laughs> you're telling people who are take you know who have worked for fifty or sixty, seventy, eighty hour weeks, who missed out everything to basically get the the same pay. Are you telling them to work and grind for basically no pay at all? And they say, oh, and, and here it is. I love this. They throw the guilt card. It says, if the, if the Dull Walking Dead cast, crew, and actors, developers really cared about this franchise, like they claim on Twitter, etc., they would return to the studio, finish the remaining two episodes, and then call it a day. If modders can do that, why can't regular professionals? I, the arrogance of this, the that, that right here. And I'm like, I, I, I look at this and I'm like, I wonder... What is wrong with some of these people who think that, oh, just do flash animations? Like, you see something on, like, YouTube or someplace on, like, Deviant or whatever, you know, these places that have, like, flash animations. Um, Dragon Slayer, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, you know, they have these little bit of flash animations. Um, oh, yeah. they could just do The Walking Dead and everything else, not knowing how hard and how long it works to do these things, to do just simple animations. It's just this, uh, this arrogance and, and even, you know, uh, yeah, it's, they, and even, you know, again, you had the, um, long on, cause you have Emily Grace Buck, a lead designer who worked, you know, 50 plus hour weeks, 70, 80 weeks. Like I said, they do doing, uh, crunch. They were constantly understaffed and deadlines were tight. And it's funny how you look at all the um, games and look at how all this stuff here is um, even worse is that the games themselves didn't sell. I mean, think about it. The Batman game, I mean, a, a game that has Batman. Yeah. Batman was a flop. Yeah. Both. Yeah, Batman uh, was season. a flop. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. like, it does make you wonder why they keep buying all these big licenses if if they want turning a profit, especially considering they made a sequel to the Batman one, which was a flop, like licenses cost money. So yeah, like I know The Walking Dead made money, but like 
Well, I yeah, it was a really successful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Well, like I saw this discuss on Discord, apparently, like they focused all the money on trying to buy these big licenses to have a Walking Dead like success, rather than on like the tech or working conditions or or anything. They just like, and they still couldn't make money. Yeah, and that's. You know, it's again, it's sad because again, Batman games completely sell out. And heck, what about the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy game? I'm surprised, and that thing didn't work out. You had a lot of these things did not work. And, and it's it's worth noting that the Guardians of the Galaxy game came out the same year Guardians of the Galaxy Two came out last year. So, yeah. so you think even, they'd be able to take advantage of that, but no, they they could like, not. I, I and think even what a, a lot, of, I think what a lot. Sorry, you first. Uh, you go ahead, man. Um. Okay. Well, like uh, this, this is more of a point that other people I've seen other people bring up, but I think a lot of it is also that. The way they design the games, that most people just let's play them rather than buy them. Well, oh, rather they. What I mean is they watch a let's play of a of the game rather than buy the game. Because, like, because it's Telltale games are very story driven games, if I'm correct. Oh yeah, and they have a different uh, type of choice, and the choices they made, and the characters, the way they connect it, and you might not like some of the game. I mean, The Walking Dead, I mean, you know, Clementine and um, and all those uh, characters, they really connected with them. And when you see what happened, sadly, it's just they just look at that formula and they didn't change. In fact, I get that. In some storylines, they should do that. But when you look at, say, the Batman stuff, you know, they, they need to change. I haven't played the, looked at the Guardians of the Galaxy. I think they did the same thing there. You need to do changes to what fits. You tr- you they try to fit everything into that the the, the the um into the box they built nicely for The Walking Dead, but they didn't diversify. <laughs> they never did, and now it's just um. Yeah, the, this does remind me of a potato chip metaphor I once heard, where it's like just different, the same potato chip but different flavors. Like, but it's still fundamentally the exact same potato chip. Like, this was, oh, more, yeah. this metaphor was more in regards to the industry, but it seems to kind of fit with how Telltale Games approached their games. Like, maybe I'm being overly negative because I never played any of their games, just, just I never had yeah, that much interest I... in it because they. Like, it, the, the, it felt like, the, it just. From looking from the outside, it, it like I'm talking more about the post Walking Dead stuff. Like those seem to be, it seemed to see, seem a bit of stale or clinical, looking from an outsider's perspective. So I didn't really care. Yeah. To, and I wonder if I say this because I wonder if a, a lot of other people were feeling that way too. Uh yeah. Um, I think that it, you can see people who. Well, let's be honest. A lot of people felt that this this uh, franchise didn't. I mean, they just couldn't continue to connect with the uh, these people. You're like, man, I really want to connect with the people, but they just they just couldn't really connect. And now here we are, and it's just like, you know what? I I just. You know, they're just like, man, I, I want to connect with this series, but it just seems like it's repetition. And we got even worse news is that um, according to this was this is um, today on Kotaku is that uh, The Walking Dead, the final season has been removed from several digital gaming fronts. The digital game, you can't download this from um, according to it says, um, um, let's see, um, Corn Carter, you cannot, it is, the final season has disappeared from 
the PlayStation and, and the Xbox One digital stores, as well as Steam and GOG. And the thing is, Season Pass is still available to buy if you on the uh, Switch eShop, by the way, if you want to do that. But uh, but yeah, it seems that these this thing has been put on hold again. And, and uh, yeah, and it seems that um, it says that they published a note. Uh, by the way, here's the uh, reason here. It says, uh, by, um, God, exactly, uh, oh, God pretty much published a note, pretty much said that this reason why is, well, why the game sudden absence, and <clears throat> here it is. And I quote, Telltale has requested a temporary pause of sales of The Walking Dead final season. For all the for all the up-to-date Telltale news, please refer to their official Twitter page. And the Telltale Twitter page at this very moment still does not have an update about this. Let me just uh, see if they do. I'm going to look at the, you know, see if they do have a Twitter. Uh, they do have a Twitter, so let's look at what they have said. They have no, let's see, um, they pretty much um, said they have multiple partners and such, but they have not made any type of of um, response to this yet. They have basically said they want to finish the game, but they haven't made any type of response on Twitter. I'm looking at the Twitter page right now. They have a response to why they pulled all the the, the, the Walking Dead final season. They had, didn't uh, do anything about that yet. It's really interesting. <laughs> and here it is. And yeah, it is. Again, is that this was still on the Switch, um, by the way. But, but also, it appears to be on the Microsoft Windows Store and in the Humble Bundle. So, and this is... <laughs> This is just a huge mess. And even better, there's actually a, a exploit is pursuing a clash action lawsuits because of this. Because of, like I said, the California Federal Warrant Act. And now this could be a company that is not only, you know, financially strapped, but could be even more financially strapped. Um, oh, by the way, they said they uh, finally did have a, a spokesperson uh, respond. Um. Hmm. Uh, Dragon Slayer, you alright? Spokesperson, so. Yeah, I'm alright. What did the spokesperson say? Oh, he says, uh, yes, we removed season pass for Walking Dead, the final season from storage for the time being. We currently still working on finding a way to hand off production of episodes 3 and 4 so that the season can be completed. Uh, the outcome of oh, yeah. these efforts will yeah, determine is, when and how. They- I think that, sorry. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, like I, like I think this is what I mentioned about the them trying to outsource now instead of keeping their employees. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I, and like I, I think I think they I think they are shutting down, but they're, it's like they are they're attempting to outsource to finish The Walking Dead. Yeah, but my question is, if this thing falls, you look and say, um, "Life is strange." Is this gonna be a hit from them? A uh, hit that they're gonna like? Well, "Life is Strange" one or two, people are gonna be like, you know, really hesitant to buy these games. As is the adventure game, these things are they going to be, um, you know, on their way out? Is this going to be something, you know? Because again, there's a lot of new stuff coming out. But yet, um, you know, these, um, these like, pseudo-adventure games, and it looks like it might not be, you know, these things might not be, um, um, you know, uh, lasting long and such. Is this a tell, a, well, telltale sign of, of this, as, as, of this pretty much being the last ride of these type of adventure games? Um, I'm yeah. asking you, um, do you, are, are you also, yes, I am. Um, you post. Yeah, go ahead, man. I'll ask an open question. What do you think? Yeah. yeah well, um, th- could this also affect how people see episodic games? Because is Life is Strange an episodic game, or? Yes, it is. And I mean, in fact, a lot of people said this episodic games is the future, 
And heck, I mean, you're still trying to fix out the whole Final Fantasy VII remake, reboot, or this three thing is going to be episodic. And huh, with this big blow about it, I wonder if Square Enix is going to sit there and say, you know what, we're just going to put the full game on the disc. Or oh, yeah. Yeah, triple, probably, whatever the PS5 take, is going to be. probably take even longer. Sorry. It'll- So we can't wait to see it by 2030 then. Yeah. Oh, oh, mm. 20, oh, 20, 2049. Mm. We'll, probably. We'll probably see it at 2049. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think that's going to be, um, mm, but yeah, that's what I think it's going to be. Um, but yeah, but the whole total tell, tell, tell stuff is, um, uh, but yeah, it's very interesting to see how these, um, this, this game series that people seem to love and, you know, cherish and got all the awards never really got, they got too big for the, I said this on the live stream and I think I'll say it again. They got too big for their britches. They, they bought these huge licenses they bought all these things and now it's time for them to well hey they couldn't pay the you know they couldn't pay the rent and now they're getting they forced out and the people i feel sorry for are the people who worked hard on them i mean the designers the the writer all the stuff they didn't know about the business stuff the business they were just saying hey make this the same uh, interesting as the walking dead they were doing what they told and they put all that hard work into these games even and and it sucks for these guys who basically got the rug Literally pulled out under him, and now basically telling us to um, to fed off on the wilderness again. This is what the game industry. I don't know what is the solution to this because I I mean this stuff right here, man. It's just that's just cruddy. You just basically come in, take something like someone you know, tell someone they're not only tell a whole group of people that they're fired, but you didn't give any warning. You didn't give any type of notice to anyone. That okay, let me build my resume up. They just like, okay, you're you're done, you're fired, get the hell out. Like thirty minutes. I'm like, what? See, and that's why I look at this stuff and I'm like, the, the, like I said, the people who are all these so-called progressives, they are the most the ones who always are the ones to say they're always progressive and they always want to help you out and help the downtrodden are the ones that are the first ones to always cut your throat at the end of the day. They're the first ones to not only stab you but they'll cut your throat. So it's again. This is a complete. It's a complete um, disaster, Telltale, and it's a shame because again, these games did connect with a lot of people. People grew up on these games. People love Clementine. They they love all the characters that were a part of it, uh, part of this series, and sadly, it is pretty much. Um, you know, Telltale games are pretty much done for uh anyway we're gonna uh, do um, pretty much uh, you have any more to add man? well like uh, like another thing about like the management of telltale games like like b- uh, back in 2015 they announced some um, quote-unquote super show deal with lionscape where they were gonna create some kind of interactive tv show experience however that was gonna work but it it turned out it wasn't so much a deal, but rather than a, but rather they used the investors' investment money from Lionsgate on other projects instead on this supposed super show. So, mm. so they basically pulled a gear box just so that they could buy a bunch of other IP license to use and. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, very um, I don't know what type of stuff. What happened to the licenses? What happened to the games? The licenses, and I hope in the future that people in these game of these these uh, developers, you know, a make sure their IPs stay in house. They don't overspend. Uh, they don't go and you know that's one of the learning lessons. Don't overspend. Don't overspend what you have in buying these licenses. Um, if you have a good license, keep on it, keep small, and all that stuff, you know, you know? Yeah. I think another yeah. good lesson for this is maybe, is maybe, and 
maybe don't depend so much on established IPs, like like don't depend on them 100%, like try to create something new every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's the one thing here, but yeah. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, we're, uh, we're going to uh, probably move on from this, man. Thank you so much, Dragon Slayer, for being, uh, you know, talk about this. Alright, uh, um, yeah, because, you know, uh, I have no problem, man, and uh, you're always uh, welcome. Yeah, uh, I'm probably going to get going soon. I'm, I'm assuming the Telltale part is over, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll um, see you later, man. Have a good night. See you, too. All right, man. Peace. See you on Discord. <laughs> and just like that, Dragon Slayer is, um, has left the building. And uh, we'll be right back. And, well, since we're dragons, we're going to be talking a little about Drago and the rest of the craziness of Lucha Underground. That, my friend, is what you call a segue. Like, pretty crappy one, but still, it was a segue nonetheless. Anyway... Uh, we'll be right back right after this. So let's listen to some, some uh, good old music. What's a good music here we can listen to? How about a little... Do, 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 do. Keeping on the 25th years of Sonic the Hedgehog, how about a little bit of... Um, you know what, let's see. Let me just shake this. Let's uh, shake things up. How about a little bit of... Uh, let's see... Um, so we talked about Batman. How about a little bit of Batman uh, Batman music of funk? OC Remix uh, artist by Stephen Kennedy. Here, live on Dixie Down. You can find that song on OC Remix because it's awesome. Go download OC Remix songs. You will not regret it. Anyway, this is the Dixie T Lounge live on TalkShoe.com. We'll be right back right after this. It is me, Duke CT, here live on Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for being here with me, Duke CT, on this Wednesday evening. And, well, we're wrapping things up here on the nice little Wednesday night. And that's what it's Wednesday, so that means Lucha Underground. Yes, it's time for a review of Lucha Underground Season 4. The. <laughs> Interesting title, Kill Mill. So let's get out of the way. Uh, first, we see, as since it was a recap of last week's events, the shocking events as Marty DeMoff Martinez not just became the Gift of the Gods champion, but yet became the Lucha Underground champion as well. But Antonio Cueto 
is talk you know he reads a letter about how Dragon Azteca Mil Mertes Pentagon Dark King Quinn are missed out on the main event of Lucha Ultra Quattro due to Martinez historic night last week. The four men now will fight in the number one contenders match in the main event where the winner moves on to the main event of Ultra Lucha Quattro. That's right, a fatal four way match for a shot at the Lucha Underground title. But first things first, we have Jack Evans in the ring says he does not want to be in promotion. He does not want to be in a promotion that says he will the does not want to be in about the exolicious in his end. In fact, that he has prevented him from helping the rest of the world underground during John's you know, wedding. He's like he's mad, like all this stuff in the real moss and everything else. And all this, he blames the exolicious, which I have no idea where this hate man come from. But yet he says, Screw this, I'm out, I quit. And then Evan says, okay, you can leave, but you win this next match. You can leave at your own power. Then if you lose, you won't be walking out to Temple Hall because he is now the latest sacrifice to Matanza. <laughs> I love Jack trying to basically talk his way out of it, but it didn't work. Uh, and then Matanza came out. Yeah, He was running to the door, couldn't open the door. Then Matanza showed up. And then, well... <laughs> it just became like a horror film match with just Batons trying to choke out, doing things like that to prove that he's like, you know, trying to, you know, uh, try to escape. Yet, you know, he's like, oh my gosh, he's going to get him. So, you know, Jack trying to escape. Batons is this big monster and just, you know, was about to take him out. But Jack, you know, hits him, um, you know, kicks him a couple times, turned away. But yet, Matanza choke slaves him on the steps. Ooh! And then, but, um, and, you know, uh, Matanza, it was all Matanza for a while, but yet, guess what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it just, it, it was Matanza's show, but then Evans flips over, hits some kicks, and then, well, because of Matanza's strength, tried, he grabbed him, ripped, ripped the um, turnbuckle, and then, Hit Matanza hit the head, um, hits his, the exposed steel, and then he hits a nice little springboard, a couple, yeah, simple, uh, um, a string, uh, single leg drop kicks, knocked the monster down, and did a 630 degree cannonball. Looks like that would knock out any man, but no, Matanza gets up and then hits the wrath of the gods to pin Evans, and just like that. Evans is another sacrifice to the gods. And then he is gone. Then next up, we have Exolicious Evil East and Joy Ryan teaming up to take on the Lucha Underground Shields champions, the Reptile Tribe, Daga, Jeremiah Snake, and Cobra Moon. Now before the match starts, however, we see the returning Paul London to the temple. And then... He introduces El Bunny and the White Rabbit and saying that they will be a new force in the temple. And it looks like this match was actually pretty good. It got a little bit, um, you know, started slow, but man, when it starts picking up, um, uh, you know, it starts picking up. So this is um, the nice beginning you had. Ryan takes his out his lollipop from his trunks and Snake eats the lollipop and then super kicked him because of course he does. Jeremiah Snake, of course he would do that. Heck, I think even Jeremiah Crane did that. He he would do that anyway because, well, he's not that well in the head. And then you see this, this match break down a bit, but man, when it starts getting, you know, starts going, it starts really good. You have some really good stuff from um, uh, Daga. And, um, you know, again, I, I'm really impressed by Daga. He actually is pretty good. I always, he always seems to impress me every time um, he gets into the ring. And then you have Ivelisse in the nice Canadian Destroyer. And Daga, of course, gets out uh, when Ivelisse picks up the pin. Ivelisse hits a step in insecurity to, uh, to Jeremiah Snake. Then hits a nice basement drop with Daga. Exolicious, uh, <laughs> you know, he has his great move. He did his nice little, well, <laughs> his move to, well, you know, his ISO, uh, 
head scissors to ass move, which, <laughs> uh, which, uh, well, would you, but as uh, W official uh, W announcers would say, he calls that the real view. <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah, he basically beats people up. You know, you know, he does that. He uses his head, uh, uses his ass as a well, as a re- like you know, as a weapon. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, Co- yeah, you have Cobra Moon, you know, again, doing her snake-like, uh, things, and, uh, Evil, and you just have Evil Lee doing some, uh, good stuff, uh, you know, nice little cannonballs to dog outside, actually hits a crossbody to Snake and Moon, and, you know, and Snake gets back in the ring to, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to take down, uh, Jeremiah Snake tries to take down Ryan, but yeah, Ryan comes in, hits a nice little, get him a nice little lollipop, and then super kicks him, but then Daka comes in, sliding like a snake, put Ryan, Joey Ryan, at, in an arm bar, and Ryan taps out. And thus, the reptile tribe continues its dominance in the temple. Meanwhile, the rabbit tribe makes his way into the ring as El Bunny hits nice little so quick drop kicks to Ryan to uh, uh, Ryan uh, to Joey Ryan and Extra Delicious. At least tries to run to. Take down El Bunny, but yet London comes in and just with a big kick right to the gut to Evil East. And, and London and El Bunny take down the Exolicious, Evil East and Ryan. And then, well, they all lined them up. And, uh, well, the White Rabbit, aka Killer Cross, walks down to the wing and then points to Jordan Ryan and says, Tick Tock. And it looks like. Joy Ryan is next on the list of the Rabbit Tribe. And then we get to another match as it was a two on one Nubchucks match as Aerostar and Drago take on the, well, <laughs> the imposing Jake Strong. And I have to say, Jake Strong, it is amazing how a different writing and booking staff has made him into a legitimate threat. On one seat, a couple episodes, he's always featuring. He looks strong. He doesn't do stupid stuff. He goes in, beats people up, and he's over. He's people like him. They chant strong. They he is he's over as hell. Can, kept it simple to him and beats up but beats up people. And he does the same thing here, and guess what? He's still over. It's amazing. Simple stuff. And the WE couldn't do I'm like, I sit here and I'm amazed how WE had this dude. AJ Strong, aka Jack Swagger, or and everything else, and they could do this stuff. I am just baffled at how this is. But then again, it's the WWE. Of course, they would screw stuff like this up. But let's continue on. The match was. <laughs> uh, the match was actually fun. Um. You, it was a nice, it was two on one handicap match, no rules, but yet none trucks are legal. Are legal. Um, Strong basically just, you know, again, shows that he's just this big dude. By the way, Jake Strong, aka Jack Swan, man, he, he's legitimately big. Solomon Russell, man, that dude is like legit. He's like 6'7. Six, 6'7, seven. Six, seven, man. Dude is like big, like 6'7, almost like. Like I said, six seven, weighs around like two seventy five. Dude is a monster, right, man? He big, he ain't small. He a big, he a big dude, all right. And he makes those guys look like like a little tiny man. He's the the big tall dude at Lucha Underground, and and um, gosh, I can't wait to see him and like pick on dudes like Matanza. That's gonna be fun as hell. Jake Strong versus Matanza, sacrifice to the gods, season five finale. Woo! Or like that. That's that will be amazing. Mm. Talk about a that. Talk about like a huge match. Oh, I can't wait for that. Anyway, Ale Star and Drago put up a good fight. We had some good stuff. Um. Um. You know, the good uh, some uh, Aerostar drag Drago has some nice nunchuck shots to um um to Jake Strong, but overall though, at the end of the day, 
Uh, while this match was entertaining by both Ariel and Drago, Jake Strong, Crow Poo, once again, to be, well, too strong as Jake Strong beats both via submission as Aerostar, you know, taps out to the ankle lock and Drago comes in, tries to save his friend, but well, <laughs> well, let's just say Aerostar not only got his ankle broke, but the dude took his nunchucks. <laughs> Why don't you just take his board too? Just like, you know what? Effort. I don't take your nunchucks. I can take your best friend with me because I can. <laughs> Jake Strong just just not only murked the dude, but just took his stuff. That is, I like that stuff, man. And it's just like getting more and more. Hey, you know, that's gonna be really you know good stuff right there. And again, it proves Jake Strong. Arrow Star and Drago had a pretty good fight. Uh, you know, again, I love Arrow Star. You know, you know he looks down, just got pushed down. Um, out like uh, from a high part from the tempo, uh, tempo. But yet, guess what? Arrow Stark jumps from a cross body from, from the second floor. Of course, you can't ever count out Arrow Star. You never could. Never, never, ever count that dude out. He's crazy. Because you never know, man. He could jump out, man, out of nowhere, and he gets it. But yeah. In the end, Arrow Star wins. Now, Arrow Star is uh, he's a winner, but he loses here as uh, Jake Strong wins yeah, via ankle lock. And now we get to the main event as Pentadon Dark versus King Crono versus Mio Mertes versus El Dragon Azteca, a fatal four way match to determine who faces Marty DeMoff Martinez for the Lucha Underground Championship in the main event of Ultima Lucha Quattro. Mer- you see, Mertes clotheslines everyone multiple times. Just Mio Mertes just comes in and just murks everybody. He wants that title. He wants his title. He lost his girl, but now he's like he focused on that title, and Mil Martez just just taking out people. DDT Pentagon hitting a small chop on um uh King Cuerno. hits hits a big layer to uh to, uh, from, uh, to uh, Dragon Azteca, and just throwing him all top of the ring. Just and then you have everyone teaming up to him like you know Cuerno drop King Martez and throwing out to the ring. Then you know. Everyone's just beating up uh, Dragon Azteca. <laughs> the, then Dragon Azteca, then uh, Corno attacking Azteca, then Paragon watches outside. Uh, then Azteca uh, is, you know, um, being cared by um, um, King Corno. Then Pentagon hits a nice insecurity to Corno. And then Azteca hits a nice rolling DDT to Pentagon. Dude hits the nicest rolling DDTs. I love that. And then Miltres hits, you know, the corner uh, post. Aiming for that test, but misses. And then a random dark phoenix appears in the ring and grabs hold of the ring. Uh, announcer Ma- Melissa Santos. Santos, she looks like she connected to him, but then, you know, Phoenix let her go and Santos ran away. And the Dragon Azteca jumps over the top rope and take down Phoenix. And they just both start fighting Phoenix and Azteca start brawling on the outside. Of the ring, and Azteca pretty much well. Azteca pretty much him, and uh, Phoenix is just going at it. So yeah, that's good. So it looks like it's the end of the road for uh, you know. It looks like those two are going to be fighting uh, for a while. That's a nice little feud there. Then um, you have King Quan out coming in with the nice arrow shot. That hits a nice suicide dive to both Mir is in Pentagon, and it looks like Pentagon and Quan you know. Yeah, you know, it looks like uh, then next you know after that, Pentagon Corno on the apron. Then then Mil Mertes come in and then did the Reapers trying it on both of them. It looks like uh, uh Mertes is gonna finally get I know a contender shot, finally getting his chance to go. But guess who comes in? The Mac out of nowhere, who has not been seen after the haunted house match, and then hits a nice couple of stunners to Mil Mertes, and then Pentagon returns to win, hits the nice little Penta driver on Mertes, and then. Gets the big victory as Pentadon Dark is the big winner as he defeats Mil Mertes, King Quino, and, Dragon, and Dragon Azteca Jr. to become the number one contender to gain his Lucha Underground title at Lucha as <laughs> Ultima Lucha Quattro. And then the Mac closes the show, says, you know what, man? Tilton Mill says, you know what? I'm not afraid of you anymore. 
because I'm not afraid of death. As he challenged Mil Mertes to a death match at Ultima Lucha Cuatro. And you know, I love what he said after this. <laughs> at, at, at this, ladies and gentlemen. And, and I'll say what um, he said here. He says, rest in peace, motherfucker. And drop the mic. And there it is, the mat. I love that, and it's just kill shot. It's just the still shot of 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 uh, Mio Mertes on the Aztec, right? Yeah, on the Aztec uh, image on the ring. It looks like yeah, Mio Mertes is out. I just could this be the future of Mio Mertes? Could this be the future of Mio Mertes? Ultima, you see, Ultima Lucha Cuatro, or will the or will Death Finally claimed the Mac. Who knows? But I am really excited. And I can't wait for Ultra Lucha Quattro. Because that looks like to be on fire. Of course it is. Because then again, Lucha Underground was, again, a great show this week. And I can't. And Lucha Underground continues to roll on with these uh, really good episodes. And I can't wait the Ultra Lucha Quattro. That's going to be a really fun celebration. Anyway. That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you like it and continue. And I hope you continually do the lovely things. Download the show on iTunes since you're doing that show. Lovely all for you. At. And not only that, um, we will put this stuff on YouTube, uh, BitChute, um, Freaking Awesome Network, and on and on FreakingAwesomeNetwork.com, uh, Man Expression, and other places I can see if I can fit this stuff in. In fact, I might just start posting this on the Escapist again because why not? <laughs> you know, I you know another place for me to spread the greatness and uh, give this stuff you know one more chance and such. You know, to continue to spread my craziness and my awesome voice onto the well internet. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for watching. It's Duke CT here. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Later.